Hello. This week I started coming in an hour early to the office around 8 o'clock. And I do this to read up on some background to try to start to get a basis for a learning open quantum systems theory. And I've been reading this book, Quantum Dissipative Systems by Ulrich Weiss. And I don't really understand it, but I started out by reading until I found something that um, I didn't understand and then trying to research um, the aspects of that, that topic with, with other sources to try to better understand it. And it's been going slowly but surely. Like right now, I am trying to get a better understanding of density matrices or density operators. But um, I do this for an hour in the morning and once nine o'clock comes around, um, since the wet lab induction last Thursday, I've been doing a lot of reading of health and safety documents, which are essentially uh, risk assessments and SOPs that outline how to use certain equipment and what the risk associates, associated with certain um, activities and equipment are in the lab. And you have to get these read and sign that you read and understand all these documents. Um, before you can go into the wet lab. So I did actually get to go into the wet lab um, for the first time, which was quite exciting. And something really cool was when Alejandro took me into the, a dark room with, um, I think it was a UV light, either a UV light or a blue light, and showed me the actual glowing E. coli in the Eppendorf um, flask, or not flask, but the like the cuvette, and it actually glowed, and it was really cool to see the sort of fruits of our labor looking at the functional fluorescent proteins. Um, that was sort of grounding for me uh, to see it in action. Um, and then since then, uh, now that I am approved to work in the lab, um, well, also, actually, I want to say that while I was in the lab, what I was actually doing before I moved past that is we were doing a transformation protocol using heat shock. So we were using a heat block to heat up some bacteria and then um, inducing a plasmid and to enter the, to enter them so that they could, um, express the protein. And, um, the, of interest, which is, we're waking wild type GFP. Wait a minute, I'm mixing things up. That was for something, uh, something relevant to Alejandro's work. But next week, the next week, the thing I was about to say before I mentioned that, I mean, I, I was mostly shadowing during that period. Um, watching Alejandro, but I did get to try to do pipetting some fluid containing um, bacteria cells and the products within them but we you have to avoid getting the you don't want this like the cell walls and this in the membranes you want just the liquid containing either the plasmid or the protein I we he was we we're doing multiple protocols simultaneously and um, I can't remember which step that one was for but we were working with plasmids and proteins I suppose it must have been proteins but there is also a protocol where you order plasmids and they come inside of bacteria and you have to extract them out before you can transform them 
into another bacteria. Anyway, next week we're planning to do an overnight culture and then we're going to work towards making wild type um, GFP dim or tandem dimers, which is pretty cool because GFP can come and stick together, the two proteins, they can stick to themselves in pairs, but they can only do this well at certain concentrations. But what you can do is you can like create a little leash between them and like chain them to each other. So that way it's they're always close to each other as if it were a high concentration and then they come together. So we're doing that. And one thing is that um, the wet lab work, I think it helps me a lot doing it to be really in tune with the theory involved behind it. So for example, when I'm doing a I'm using this working with a centrifuge. I like to understand that like the physics behind how the different materials are separated in the centrifuge and then like the reason why we're separating the materials. Because otherwise I think I'm I'm not sure how uh, enjoyable I can find it. I mean it's work, but I think there are ways to find enjoyment even in wet lab work even if it's not your favorite thing by sort of understanding the processes behind it that way you sort of understand what you're doing and um, what's going on at the molecular level and that helps you be more excited about uh, pipetting and weighting and um, cooking agar and things like that. So I, in order, but in order to prepare for Tuesday and for next week, I've been reading protocol. So more reading. Um, it's not as long and intense as reading health and safety documents. Um, but it is sort of, it is more, the uh, stakes are different because this, I'm really trying to find a strategy to gain an understanding of the protocol in order to maximize my ability to be efficient and competent when I arrive at the lab on Tuesday to work. So that way I can try to make it so that the reading isn't worthwhile it is worthwhile and isn't a waste of time essentially um of course the lab one thing i do understand is that i i'm not going to do things perfectly the first time or every time necessarily and so i have to have patience there and along with that challenge there was um well, I did do laser safety induction as well. Um, that was fairly recently. And um, that was a two hour uh, meeting on Teams, which probably isn't ideal, but it they covered a lot of information and there's a form that you have to fill out afterwards. But it just, it gives you the, the idea is that it gives you the awareness so that way when you walk into a laser lab, you know what things to think about. You don't have to know everything in the whole two hours. But um, that was quite interesting in some ways. There was some cool information in there. But then on Friday, there was Journal Club. And after Journal Club in particular, I had a long, like, hour and a half long conversation with my supervisor. And I was asking him about fluorescence and isotropy because I find it confusing. And he, we ended up talking about my interest in theoretical work and experiment. And he basically said that it's really not a great idea for me to learn experiment and theory at the same time. There's a lot of different... Um, expertise that you want to try to obtain 
and there's things like time correlated single photon counting and there's a neutron uh, scattering that I'm going to be I'm going on a trip to Oxfordshire to learn more about later this month. The one thing he said to me was, um, you're important, you're extremely important to this group, not only because you're smart, but because the wet lab work you do creates our samples. And without our samples, we are nothing. So that hit me differently. I suddenly felt a sense of responsibility that I hadn't felt really before because I was more thinking about myself and my work and how much I can push myself. But now I'm like, I do need to scale back my aspirations for theoretical work. I can't let it compromise my experimental work because my work in the wet lab, other people are depending on it. Like at least two, three or four other people or more, you know, and um, I know these people and I work with them and I have, their, I have good relationships with all of them. So it's, it's now I, I feel like I have some restraint and responsibility and it's honestly a good feeling because I feel like I still want to work on the theory stuff. But after I, now I know that I have to work on it within the confines of this space. And Young Chen mentioned, my supervisor mentioned the um, possibility of taking a break from working theory work at some point in the future to focus or taking a break from experimental work in the future at some point to focus on theory instead of trying to juggle them. And I could do that, but first my expertise needs to be in mutagenesis and then probably something like optical spectroscopy and more specifically he mentioned time correlated single photon counting, which I gather is more challenging and more sophisticated than um, steady state pump probe um, procedures. So I have that to look forward to. Um, and eventually I'll be learning neutron scattering, hopefully if I can get to Oxfordshire, to the ISIS lab and learn about that. Uh, but for now, my main priority is wet lab protocols and mutagenesis. And I feel like they are now associated with a real, genuine purpose outside of myself. And I think that's a good thing to have when it comes to your PhD work. If you can get it out of your own head and your own sort of ego and your own self-worth and realize that you're most likely working as part of a team, and even if it's just your supervisor, um, they hired you and they're depending on you to get the job done. So anyway, I, I will hopefully be have a lot to talk about next week because I'll have lots of lab work and I'll see how enthusiastic I am about it then. Thanks for watching. <laughs>